Number one asks us to identify any lines of symmetry the figure has. So remember, a line of symmetry means that it's going to reflect over it, and then the image will land on top of itself. And in this first one, um, we're not going to have any, because even if we split it kind of here, this isn't going to land on anything that looks like it. Same with this curve. So that's not going to work. Um, same thing this way, this rounded edge would end here, okay, this rounded edge would end here, plus um, the colors are different. The middle one has a horizontal line of reflection through the center and a vertical line of reflection through the center, so it would land on top of itself either way. Um, diagonals, not going to land on top of each other because this corner would end here not on top of the other corner, so just these two. And this third one has no lines of reflection because if we fold any, you know, if you go here, the foot's not going to fold over onto another foot, and that would happen on every single time you try it. Number two in quadrilateral B, A, D, C, A, B is equal to A, D and BC is equal to DC. The line AC is a line of symmetry for the quadrilateral. So based on the line of symmetry, explain why the diagonals AC and BD, and let me get BD drawn in here, are perpendicular to one another. So when we take a look at this, um, we see that A is the same distance from B as it is from D. So this means that A is going to be on the perpendicular bisector of BD. And we also see that, um, and let me get a different color here. We also see that C is equidistant from B and D. So C is the same distance from B and D. So it's on the perpendicular bisector. And A is the same distance from B and D. So it's on the perpendicular bisector. So that means segment AC and BD have to be perpendicular. So A, oops, down here. So A is equidistant from B and D. So it is on the perpendicular bisector of BD and same for C since C is equidistant from B and D. Therefore, AC is perpendicular to BD. And then based on the line of symmetry, explain why the angles A, B, C, so let's draw that on there. So why is um, angle A, B, C this angle equal to angle A, D, C this angle? And that would be because if this is a line of symmetry, then that means that a reflection would flip um, the image onto itself. And so... So a line of symmetry is a reflection that um, translate or transforms. Um, well, let's say a line of symmetry is a reflection a reflection that takes an image onto a uh, sorry a figure onto its image. So these two angles are images of one another and reflections are rigid transformations. So the size, um, well, we'll just say, so the images are congruent. All right, number three, three line segments form the letter Z, rotate the letter Z counterclockwise. Um, around the midpoint <clears throat> of segment BC. So around the midpoint of segment BC, we're going to rotate this um, counterclockwise. So this way. So we would be taking 
Um, a, and if you want, you can take a look at if we were to actually connect A to the center and then do a 180 degree rotation, we can see um, that it would rotate, A would end up landing on D and D would end up landing on A. And then you can see the um, line connected to the center here. So if we rotated C 180 degrees away, it would land on B and B would land on C. So the result is that the Z or the, M, the figure lands on itself. Number four, there's a square ABCS inscribed in a circle with center D. So let's just draw this so we can have a visual. Um, so we've got a square drawn inside of or inscribed in this circle, meaning the vertices are all touching the edges. So what is the smallest angle that we can rotate D? So let's go A, B, C, S, and then D is the center. So what's the smallest angle we can rotate around D where A would land on B? So we want to know this rotation. So there's four equal parts here. A circle has 360 degrees. So we'll divide it by four to evenly split that and find out that that angle is 90 degrees. All right, then number five says that we have a square whose vertices are A, B, C, and D. How would we decide a point inside of this square, which vertex it is closer to? And so this is where we do the perpendicular bisectors of each side and um, split the square into regions. So let me just look at that quick. So if we do, here's um, a circle around A and B so that we can get the perpendicular bisector here. And then um, we can keep doing this to each of the sides. Now, if we're using the side, all of these circles are gonna end up being the same size. So I don't have to redo the one on B. And then I can just connect here as another perpendicular bisector. And um, then if I were to do it, so for um, CD, okay, that's going to perpendicular, like we've already got them. Those two are going to be the perpendicular bisectors. Um, and so when we this point is the point that's equidistant from all of the vertices. So if E landed in this region, it's going to be closer to A. If it landed in this region, it's closer to B. This region, it's closer to C. And this region, it's closer to D. And then if it landed on one of the um, perpendicular bisectors, then, so if we kind of looked at it, let me get rid of this point in the middle. So let's just say, let's just draw E on here. So if this was E, now it's the same distance from all the vertices. If it was here, it's equidistant from A and D. Okay, and here it's equidistant from C and D, closer to those than AB. Here would be closer to BC. Well, the same distance to B and C closer than AD. Here, it would be the same distance from A and B, but closer than C and D. So you want to do perpendicular bisectors of each side and split it into regions. Number six, L and M are perpendicular, some, um, sometimes reflecting a point over M. So we're going to be reflecting over M or thinking about reflecting over M. So let me just draw that on here. So if we reflect over M, sometimes that has the same um, outcome as rotating 180 degrees around point P. Select all of the labeled points that are the same reflecting versus rotating. So when we're rotating around this point, that means that anything on line L is going to be the same rotated as reflected. So if I reflect E, it's going to land on L. And if I rotate E, it's going to land on L. Any of these points off of that line, that's not going to happen. So A and E are going to be the ones that are the same, and all the rest of them are going to be different. 
Number seven, here's a triangle POG. So here's our original triangle. Match the description of the rotation with the image of POG under the rotation. So when I look at this, I know with a rotation, so when we're talking about a rotation, there's going to be a fixed point. So one of these points, POG, are going to stay in the same spot. So I would like to kind of isolate that on the picture first or see that. And you can see we've got one, two, three of the descriptions that are going around O and one that's going around P. So let's just take a look here. So in this one, it looks like O stays in the same spot. Okay, in, in number two, O appears to stay in the same spot as well. It's just kind of three triangles down. In number four, O stays in the same spot. And in number three, O is not the one that stays in the same spot. In number three, P stays in the same spot. So that helps me to determine that D is number three. Okay, so this one was D. Then we just have to look at kind of the direction of the rotation. So here we've got a clockwise, a clockwise, and a counterclockwise. So which way is this original shape rotating? So when I look at number one, the original P was over here, and now it went this way. Okay, so rotating this way is counterclockwise. So that isolates that to letter C. So we already know that number one is letter C, but we can look at these other ones still. Um, G was down here in number, it originally started down and now it's up. So this one went this way. So this one was clockwise. And um, number four, okay, P started up here and now it's down this way. So that again is a clockwise rotation. So now we want to decide on the angle of rotation. So is it 60 degrees or is it 120 degrees? So let's take a look at where the original P was. So that's in two triangles and down two. So I'm going to go into and down two. Here was my original P, okay, on number two. And the other one that we have left is number four. So over two, down two. Here was my original P there. The reason I want to do this is then I can connect that original into the center and then to the image. Let me do that with a straight line so that it looks nicer. And so then you can see the angle of rotation. So when I connect that to the center and then to the image, we can see that this one is a 120 degree rotation. And when I connect it here, image and pre-image to center, I can see that this one's the 60 degree rotation. So number two is the 120, so that's B. And then number th um, four is the 60 degree rotation. So this is A.